All right, guys, in today's video, we have more PlayStation news and information to go over and discuss. We have multiple topics we're going to be covering in this video, starting with the free PlayStation Plus games of January. We're also talking about a new headquarters that Sony recently set up. And finally, we're talking a little bit about Elden Ring because there are some interesting rumors about this game that have surfaced, as well as some alleged concept art that seems to point to this game maybe looking a little bit more like Bloodborne than we originally expected. And on top of that, From Software has issued an official update, if you want to call it that, although I don't know if it can necessarily be counted as a full update for Elden Ring. But before we get into it, if you could do me a favor, hit the like button to help the video out and share your support. Hit the subscribe button if you're new and hit the bell notification icon as well so you can be notified immediately anytime a new video goes live. I also just want to take a moment to thank every single one of you for helping make this easily the best year I've ever had on YouTube. It was such a really good time. I know that this year has been tough for many, but I want to let everybody know that you have made this year significantly better for me and you truly did make a difference. So thank you so much for that. I'm really looking forward to next year and what we're going to be doing in 2021. But starting here with the first story, I just want to let everybody know what January's PlayStation Plus games are. And it seems that Sony wants to start on a really good note by offering PlayStation 5 users Maneater. And we also have some interesting information about Maneater that I'm going to let you know in a second. But we're also looking at Shadow of the Tomb Raider as well as Greedfall. These titles will be available starting January 5th up until February 1st. And I think this is actually a very, very strong lineup. I think it's Sony trying to get off on the right foot and let us know that we can expect more value potentially from PlayStation Plus. Hopefully they will keep it up. I haven't played Shadow of the Tomb Raider or Greedfall or actually Maneater for that matter. So I will be interested in trying at least some of these titles out. But from what I've heard, all three of these games are high quality. They've gotten pretty good review scores and people that have played them have overall enjoyed them. Now, what's interesting about Maneater is it is PS5 only. So if you are on PS4, you're not going to be able to get that title, unfortunately. But apparently Sony is offering refunds to those who recently purchased Maneater following the PlayStation Plus announcement. It says here in a rare move, Sony has apparently automatically refunded players who recently purchased a copy of Maneater after announcing that the game's PlayStation 5 version will be part of January 2021's PS Plus lineup. This was first brought to light by a Reddit user, Bray Wyatt, who revealed that despite the refund, the game was not removed from their library. Since they got to keep the original license, they won't lose access to the game should they choose to end their PlayStation Plus membership. In response to Bray Wyatt's thread, a number of other users reported receiving the same automatic email from Sony. So that's a pretty cool move that Sony's doing. I think the best part about this is that they're just automatically doing this. And it's very interesting to me because I'm sure many of you notice, I mean, it's kind of impossible not to notice if you are on Twitter or if you're on YouTube or basically any social media where the official PlayStation account announces the monthly PlayStation Plus lineup, all you see is a flood of comments from people saying, I just bought this game yesterday. I just bought this game three days ago. And I don't necessarily know if this is something we're going to continue to see. But this does kind of set up a situation where maybe if you buy a game that's scheduled to be on PlayStation Plus, let's just say a day or two days, maybe 48 to 72 hours before it's actually announced, maybe Sony will just implement this as a feature, I guess, where you will just automatically get refunded. Again, that is the coolest aspect of this is that it's automatically happening. There's no requirement to go ask Sony for this. So who knows? Maybe this is something they're going to do going forward. Very interesting stuff there. We'll have to kind of keep an eye on this and follow this and see if this is a trend that continues or if Sony's just doing this now at the beginning of the uh, PlayStation 5 life cycle because there's still kind of a smaller library to choose from. But moving along from that, I do want to let everybody know that Sony has officially set up a new headquarters in Singapore. 
I just want to relay this information to everybody. Back in July, Sony Interactive Entertainment reorganized their operations in Asia. The Southeast Asia market was previously being run out of an Asian hub in Hong Kong, according to Geek Culture. Now those operations have moved to a brand new HQ in Singapore. The hub in Singapore is known as the Asia Business Operations Department of Sony Interactive Entertainment. As the Asia West region, it will deal with operations in Malaysia, Singapore, and the Philippines. Uh, Katsuhiko Marase is now head of the department and has just finished his quarantine period, having recently moved to Singapore. Marase has uh, presided over PlayStation operations for years with credits on games like Gran Turismo Sport, Horizon Zero Dawn, Ratchet and Clank, and Uncharted for A Thief's End. The overall significance of this is it means Sony is trying to expand into other territories with, I'm assuming, specifically the PlayStation brand, where they're not really as popular, they're not really as well-known, and they're not really as well-established. And so this is just an attempt to basically help PlayStation become even more of a global brand than it already is and just kind of strengthen it in regions where they see the potential to be able to do that. And that's just a good thing in general because if you do enjoy the PlayStation brand and you do like what the PlayStation brand does and brings to the table for gaming, then seeing further growth uh, worldwide is only going to help kind of boost that. And so to finish off this video, we're talking a little bit more about Elden Ring. This isn't a game I talk about too often. Frankly, I don't think anybody's talking about this game that often because there's just not too much to go on here when it comes to news and information, at least to any official capacity. And unfortunately, the bulk of what we're going to be discussing about Elden Ring is coming in the form of a rumor, but still, I do find it interesting. So the first thing has to do with development on Elden Ring and how apparently it's actually much further along in development than we might believe because we haven't seen much of it. Apparently, it's in the polishing stage and it's mechanically similar to Dark Souls. So reading here, it says the latest potential Elden Ring news unfortunately doesn't come from an official channel, but from a podcast between an Italian streamer known as Westa Twitch and Federico Fazzetti, a video game journalist. During the conversation, Fazzetti reveals that Elden Ring is complete and that From Software is simply using the extra time to polish the game. According to the studio's original timeline, the game would have already released by now. The big reason for the delay has been the CV issue, which has not only forced the team to continue development from home, but forced the company to shift its original launch plans. Fazzetti also commented, commented excuse me, on some of the mechanics of the game, indicating that Elden Ring is similar to From Software's other major franchise, Dark Souls. While many of From Software games may feel similar to one another, Fazzetti claims that Elden Ring follows quite closely to the Dark Souls formula, though he stopped short of providing much more detail on the topic. For players who were hoping Elden Ring would follow an evolution similar to Sekiro, or what Sekiro did to the From Software formula, it looks like that may not be the case. So I do find that interesting if it does turn out to be true. Again, we have to take this with a grain of salt because it is a rumor, but this is kind of something I've been hearing a little for a little bit now. Anytime anybody who may possibly be in the know with Elden Ring, they all kind of say the same thing, which is, yeah, it's, it's pretty far along in development or it's close to being done. And that's actually a really good sign if this is true because all this extra time that they're taking to polish it, it means we're going to get the best possible game when it does launch. And I'm assuming if it is finished, that certainly means it will launch sometime in 2021. I'm also really liking the idea that it's very similar to Dark Souls. I hope it's not like exactly like Dark Souls, and I assume it won't be because that would just come off as more of a... Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's it's a weird situation because when it comes to Dark Souls, I like that formula so much that I really do kind of just feel like just give me more of that. But it will also be interesting to see what other things they try to really change. But I actually do like the fact that it's going to be more of the Dark Souls formula. But Continuing on here with more Elden Ring information, it says that a new look at From Software's Elden Ring has been provided today by a well-known Soul Series Chinese content creator who shared supposed concept art for the game. In a new video that has been removed shortly after going live, LB is what I will call them, so I don't butcher their name, who is also, you know, a well-known content creator, showed new concept art showing two monsters. One of them looks closer in style to what we've seen in Bloodborne. And that's why I'm mentioning this. I don't think I'll be able to show the image 
because I don't want to get in any type of trouble potentially. Uh, if this is legitimate, it does look legitimate. But yes, this does look similar to something you would see in Bloodborne, certainly closer to Bloodborne than what we've seen in the past or maybe even the Dark Souls games. And I just wanted to mention that to you guys because I don't know if we're ever going to get a Bloodborne 2. There's a lot of people, I think, who loved Bloodborne for the aesthetic, the fact that the monsters, the creatures, they're all just so unique and they just have this style to them that you don't really see in other games and you haven't really seen in any other game. And we could kind of see that maybe continue a little bit uh, to some extent anyway with Elden Ring, which I think would be great because I agree with what a lot of people think, and that is the enemy design in Bloodborne is really just something you don't see pretty much anywhere else. And I would love to see that style somewhat continue going into Elden Ring. Looking at the other image, um, it looks definitely grotesque. Uh, there's a face, like it looks almost like a human face associated with it, which is a little, you know, kind of uncommon, I think, with some of these, uh, you know, designs that you would normally see in. I don't really know what this creature is, but it definitely looks like an abomination. Uh, so it certainly looks like it would fit perfectly as a boss in a uh, From Software title. But finally, before ending this video, I do want to give you a little bit of official information on Elden Ring. Again, granted, it's nothing major, but it's something. From Software's marketing and communication manager, Yasuhiro Kateo, if I'm saying their name correctly, recently released a statement on Twitter thanking fans for supporting the studio and Elden Ring. Specifically, he thanked those who helped Elden Ring win the most anticipated game award at the Game Awards 2020. This has made the From Software team, quote, highly motivated, unquote. And Kateo said that the studio can forge ahead with development undaunted. And so again, it's nothing major, but... Clearly, they're letting us know that they're paying attention. I'm sure they are well aware of just how eager fans are to see more of this game. And it is crazy to me that Elden Ring beat out games like God of War Ragnarok as well as Horizon Forbidden West to take that crown of most anticipated game, at least for those who voted for it for the Game Awards 2020. And I have to admit that this is one of my most anticipated games. This is right up there for me alongside God of War, Ragnarok, and Horizon Forbidden West, as well as many others. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you did find it informative. Be sure to leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Again, leave the video a like if you did enjoy it. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.